Okay, well, back with Father Bauer. So, Father, let's field a few more questions. Great. Right. That? Wonderful. Iris? Okay, sure. Um, a question from Li Jiachen. Jiachen. Hello, Jiachen. He asks, which trip makes you most impressed? In what country? Which country you visited? Well, you know, the countries I visited are not too many. I've been through Japan a few times. I have gone to a conference or two in Japan also, one actually, that I think I've been in Rome a couple of times. But the real, the intensity has happened in the Philippines, to be honest with you. It's to be in the crowded Manila airport mm -hmm. or to step out into the humidity and the heat of Manila in the middle of summer uh, and all of that traffic and so on, that really makes an impact on a person who's traveling, mm -hmm. you know. So, and, but I, the, also the human emotion and so on, the pride I have felt in Fuda students, real pride as I've watched them interact with professors and, and Tungshu classmates in the Philippines at Holy Name, those are very intensely emotional uh, moments for me. Also, I must admit that the faculty members at Holy Name, especially after my first few days the first time, they became very comfortable with food out student. Not be, I think it's because of students, but I had the emotional feeling of, I'm glad I'm here to uh, see the happiness of the Filipino professors enjoying our students, put it that way, yes, enjoying yes, your personality, yes, yes, yes. enjoying your good heartedness, mm -hmm. enjoying your, um, your way mm -hmm. of being Taiwanese, or if you prefer to be called Chinese, but you are who you are. And even if it's different in a way that's a little unsettling, for the Filipinos, they still appreciate the differences. Some of our young lady students were dressing a little bit in a sexy way, a little more than Filipino uh, girl women students are allowed to dress on campus. And believe me, when our students dress up, they look they look terrific. And when they come into class like that, uh, and it's a little bit of a jolt, you know. But I was still proud of everyone. Uh, but I was aware of the differences there in the cultural uh, situation, the mixing. So I, that's my answer. The Philippines, and again, I'm reflecting back. I don't talk today about the other three groups I traveled with there. I'm more, mostly with the Yuan Chuming today. But all the groups were great experiences for me. Also a question related to the Philippines uh, from Jin Tong. Jin Tong. Hi, Jin Tong. Karen, actually. I know Karen. She, she asked you, do you think it, if it is good for college students to go to Philippines? Being volunteers, why? Well, I think any kind of volunteer work, whether it's here in Taiwan, plenty of volunteer work we can do here, and probably should be doing as, as much as we can. Yes. Um, and yes. there's plenty of great volunteer work overseas too. Uh, sure, I think that's really good. You know, volunteering is a way of loving, a way of serving. Whenever we love someone, whenever we serve, we are the ones who receive. It is not we ourselves bringing the blessing for someone else only. We are doing that, but we are receiving blessing too, and in a very wonderful way. And just as long as we prepare ourselves to understand this, mm -hmm. and as I've been using the word appreciate, yes. to appreciate this mystery, it is, it is in giving that we receive. Truly it is. Um, so as long as that's the key thing here, yes, I fully approve of Taiwan students volunteering. Mm -hmm. And from Jia Yi, she asks yes. yeah, her explanation. Yes. Thank you, Jia Yi. Oh, okay, thank you. She says, I really appreciate your answer. Also, my question includes the way people think over some habits and customs. For example, I had heard that one foreigner was curious why his hometown people couldn't accept pardon at all. Uh, I see. So, so once you lived in Taiwan for such a long time, when you returned to the States, do you feel that there are some things that you're not very used to back in the States and habits or customs that are foreign to you now that you've been you know, living well, I, in, yeah, for so long? Yeah, well, um, I think many Americans, well, let me put it this way. The people I visited in my family, my cousins and my families I met through my church work in the States earlier in my life, um, oh gosh, I have to be so careful here because this is going to go out in public and but I want to be honest, I, sometimes I don't think some Americans are as sensitive to our image as Americans overseas as they should be. In other words, in politics, in economics, in academic life and so on, in art, if we portray ourselves as Americans as America has the answer, 
we are the leader of the world. We, the America first, this stuff that President Trump has been again, you know, make America great again. And this is exactly what contributes to misunderstanding of American people overseas. When a person lives outside of the United States, a person who carries an American passport, born in America the way I do, I was born American, I carry an American passport, I'm proud to be American, but hey look, we are not the greatest country in the world, why pretend to be? There is no one country in the world that's the greatest. We should all be concerned about helping one another, you know, sharing and so forth. Maybe I'm going a little off the track, but um, one thing that bothers me is a blindness among many American people with whom I relate when I'm on homely, a real uh, lack of interest in what people in Taiwan, for example, or in Asia may feel about the American government or about the American scene or the policies and behavior and so on and so forth. Many Americans take it for granted that Hollywood movies are terrific. And I'm here wondering, oh God, I have all these students who think every American child calls his dad by his first name or his mom by his, her name. And we don't do that. But our students see this in a Hollywood movie and they think that that's the truth. Most Americans, unless, unless they've lived overseas, they have no idea of the misconceptions and misunderstandings about this. Another quick example is racism, regarding racism. There are many students in Taiwan who are convinced that white people in the United States, uh, you know, are Caucasians like myself, hate black people. But we don't dare relate with black people. But never be a friend with a black person. Always avoid a black person. Hey, come on, give me a break. President Obama easily won re-election. He easily won his first, if you look at the figures, his, his, his total votes across the country, both times that man ran for the presidency were very high. They really were. He outperformed recent presidential candidates for sure. Okay? Now, don't tell me that the United States is full of prejudice among, among Caucasians. Of course there are some Caucasians who are, who are, uh, who are racist and embittered and so on and, and all of that prejudice. But, but so we can get, we can get uh, impressions overseas about the United States, and I don't think the United States people are as concerned about this as we should be. I think President Trump should be very concerned about the impression he makes when he talks about the appearance of girls and women and the way he, he addresses fellow candidates running for the presidency. He was a disgrace. I'm sorry, if, I know this will be on YouTube, but he, he made people like me feel very ashamed of my nationality, frankly speaking. And I'd say that to the man in person if I had the chance. And I think it relates back, Father, to ask a follow-up question. Do you think that we in Taiwan have much to learn from these problems that you see in the United States? I think we have a lot to learn because these are human problems. They do not belong only to people who are American. Mm -hmm. You know, there's plenty of prejudice in, in Taiwan. Yes. There really is. If we look at uh, the feelings that many Taiwan people, well, I have to be careful, that some Taiwan people may at certain moments have toward Vietnamese workers toward Filipino workers, toward persons of a darker skin color. I mean, I know students who come back from Jai or from Kaohsiung or from Hwangu after summer vacation. These are your classmates. They are my students who almost apologize for having a little darker skin color now. Why? Well, they were outdoors in the summertime. Maybe they worked or maybe they were playing more basketball. I don't know. But now they, Abuha is waheda, what people hate. What's wrong with that? Black is a darker is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. But there are some people in the United States who look down on others with darker skin. Don't tell me, please, that that never happens in Taiwan. It sure does. Look at all the skin lightening, the skin lightening products you can buy in stores. Go to these great big Bible books. Ask yourselves. We should be asking ourselves. Why don't we talk about this more openly? I talked about it a little bit in my newspaper. Don't know if you'll forgive me for bringing that up. And I got some negative readers, readers with negative responses to that. Why, how can I, as, a, as an American and as a Caucasian, question Taiwanese women or girls who use skin lightening products on their face? How can I even hint that they're contributing to a little bit of a racist attitude? Mm -hmm. no, but I, I <laughs> I'm sure we can all benefit from listening more. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Um, many people ask you 
like which sites in Taiwan impress you the most, or which part of Taiwan do you love most? And these two questions are from the Feng Shui and Hong Zi Yuan. Mm -hmm. Zi Yuan, Feng Shui. Thank you for asking. You know, thank you very much. Those are good questions. I, I don't travel much, even in Taiwan. I, I'm a pretty much a homebody. I have a church responsibility every weekend, okay? Mm -hmm. So during this time of my life, on Saturday afternoons, around 3 o'clock, I go across town to Yongha, and I go to my church, and I'm available to our people there. I travel and, I, and I travel, I travel on the I mean, We're just talking about how to travel. Yeah. We're all traveling. You've, you're, you're traveling today, too. Okay. So my, and then I stay at church until Sunday late morning, then I come home. I get home around 11.30 in the morning, maybe, something like that, a little earlier some days. Um, so I don't have time to travel around, and my earlier church work was similar, a different church, but similar. All Sunday morning I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, look, uh, my religious order, the uh, Shang Yanghui, we have Furen, uh, Zhong, Zhongshe, in Jiayi. So of course I know Jiayi a little bit, I've gone there many times. I've been to Kaohsiung a few times, I enjoy Kaohsiung. I've been to Taichung, I've been to... I've had MA exams at Jingyi, Dasha. You know, I've been around a little bit, mm -hmm. but I don't really have favorite places in Taiwan. I guess Fuda is my favorite place. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound hilarious? But this is what this is it my doesn't, home. It doesn't, this is my home, and uh, you know, I enjoy neighborhoods in, in Taipei. I enjoy Yongha. It's a very, a very active, modern, clean. Uh, if I feel like I'm in some place in New York when I. Get off the MRT at uh, yes. at Yonga, you know, yeah. Yonga and Shichang, and make my right turn and walk down to my church there, and so on. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more. Oh, or maybe. Oh, uh, the photos first. Okay, okay of course, yes. Oh, so well, this is a funny picture. Yes. Okay, I like to wear hats. Okay. Now, uh, one reason is because I have this skin problem, and I'm supposed to I'm supposed to wear a hat according to the doctor. We're all perspiring because there was no air conditioning in that bus. Okay. This is in a bus in Manila. We had just gotten off the airplane. Those are not FUDA students. I was uh, in the airport in Manila, no, no, in Bohol, waiting for my plane. And the students were staying behind. I was coming back to FUDA to help with a freshman camp. I think one of you guys were there, maybe. <laughs> anyway, and so another Shenfu was on his way to Manila. He was to meet the students later in Manila, I think, the next day. They were without a FUDA teacher for 24 hours. Okay, so here I am in the airport waiting to get on the plane, and I noticed these young ladies, and they were with a young guy, and I thought, boy, there's a lucky guy. One guy with these, these dolls, and they were all wearing those hats. So actually, the other two had hats, too. So I thought to myself, I, I, I probably could never get them to be in a picture. I don't know they're complete strangers. And, uh, you know, with their hats, be a cute picture. But I, I gave up on that hope. They all get on the airplane with us, okay? So we're all on the same airplane, and somehow that young man with them noticed my hat. You can look at the top, you'll see an SVD. Yes. This comes from Societas Verbi Divini, uh, which is the Latin acronym yeah, right, yeah, for, there it is, see the SVD? SVD? That's the name of our show way in Latin, is Societas Verbi Divini, Society of the Divine Word. Right. So this guy walks up to me, he got up from a seat in the airplane, and he's with these dolls over there, and he comes, he says, excuse me, he says, are you a Catholic priest? I said, yes, I am. I stood up, I'm, I'm dead, we didn't take, we hadn't taken on. I stood up and we shook hands. He said, I'm a priest also. I said, no kidding. He said, I, he said, you a teacher? I said, yeah, I teach at Fuda in Taipei. He said, oh, I, I've heard about Fuda. He says, the SVD professors who I knew in the seminary, all, they all mentioned Taiwan and Furan at one time or the other. I said, God, that's incredible. You know the SVD? He said, oh, yeah, I went to your schools, but I'm a diocesan priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then I, I said, well, what are you a lucky guy? Who are, is this your sister? You want to say a couple, these are your sisters, huh? I mean, you know, I'm a little curious. You know, well, they're my, my cousins. One of them is my sister, and the others are my cousins. And we came to Bohol for a, a few days' vacation, so we're going back. So then I, he took me over there. By now, the stewardess is telling us to get our seatbelts on again. So as we got off the plane, I said to them, do you think we could take a picture with your beautiful hats? You all look so nice. And I put my camera in father, their brother, her brother's hands, yes. and he took this picture on the bus. Well, the bus was on, was on the tarmac on the way to where we got off to get go into the uh, Manila airport. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of their names, uh, but they were very sweet and friendly. And 
I thought we had kind of a funny, and I have a, a story to tell you. Yes, with the SVD hat. With the SVD hat. Of the SVD One hat. of my hats. Yes. Wonderful. These are students from Holy Name University wearing their uniforms. They wear uniforms? They wear uniforms. Yes, University. they do. And uh, they have one day a week where they don't wear the uniform. That's called wash day. Mm -hmm. So they can wash the uniforms at home. Right. Uh, but they don't they look terrific? And uh, they were very sweet. And they were taking care of our students. Here is our Yuan Chui. There's Kay. Kay on the left. Yes. She's, you gotta love her. Yes. And Miki is next to her. Mm -hmm. The two young ladies on the left, kind of in the middle on the left. Miki is on the far left. It's from the Spanish department. Mm -hmm. She's graduated now. And her sister is in the Fudai Irwin Shi. Why is she again? And Kay, our beloved Kay, passed away about a month ago. A terrible drowning accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. And now we have Mooney is in the front there. Yeah, okay, there we are. Very fine. Okay, that's that's fine. And so you just you can you want to ask anything? You got you, you could. That was our group the morning I left them. To I had come back from freshman camp, as I say, and Nia Shenfu met the group. I think he met them the next day. Uh, they they uh, met at the airport by by plan. Then he took them on to another part of their trip. Right. Mm -hmm. So we were at a little hostel. Yeah, staying overnight. Here they are. They would wear their garb for different. Uh, uh, parts of their workshop on Aboriginal culture. Mm -hmm. They had to bring all that with them. And by the way, we did not have air conditioning, as far as I remember, we did not have air conditioning in that room. Now maybe my memory is wrong, but it was warm. And uh, they're wearing all that, all those clothes. Ooh. There's my passport and uh, the, the boarding pass. I was coming back alone without them. First time all week I was alone. Mm -hmm. Kind of felt good. Yes. Because when you're with the group, every minute you're with someone, you know. Yeah. Kind of felt nice. And I thought this would make a funny picture, a fun picture. Mm -hmm. Now I have it for today. Yes. Also I, the day. Yes. One thing that I noticed uh, is that your middle name is also is Joseph. Yes. It's Joe, actually. Yeah, that's like right. Murphy. Yes it is. I'm naming my son Joe. Yeah. One day I have a son. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. If I have a son yeah. His first name will be Joseph. And my younger brother's name is Joseph. My That's mom and dad really like the name yeah. Joseph. My grandfather's uh, Baptist name is also. Oh, okay, Baptist. great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there one more? I think there's one more. No. No? That's, that's, that's okay. all. Okay, so thank you for the wonderful photographs. You're, yeah. you're very welcome. Yeah. And uh, we will uh, answer a few more questions and we'll talk about uh, some, some things about Taiwan. Okay, good. Fine. Okay. A question from Lu Ming. Lu Ming. Hello, Lu Ming. Yes. Hello, Lu Ming. You, have you encountered any difficulty while traveling in different countries? Well, <laughs> I left my passport once on an airplane. That was a bit of a difficulty. <laughs> Here's what happened. A quick story. My problem is I don't tell short stories, do I? My father was having a hard time with his knee. He had had his knee replaced uh, and it had gone. Everything went well for three or four years or five. Then it, that went bad, and the doctor, the doctors put a new knee in there for him, and that knee was a disaster. So he was feeling really badly. My father was about 75 years old, and um, I asked my religious order for permission to go home to visit my dad. It was not a home leave time. I had been home on home leave a year or so earlier. I would have, in those years, we went every three years. So I went and I said, look, my dad, you know, he's really in rough shape. I'd like to go back to Chairman. No problem. They gave me the money. I got the plane ticket. So I went back. And while I was there, I visited my goddaughter uh, overnight. And she lived in Minnesota. And there was a lot of ice outside of her, the garage door. And I borrowed her grandma's car to visit a Fuda student. Mm -hmm. And I fell on the ice right on my back. And oh, it was my back hurting me. <laughs> See, gosh. so this is a long oh story ago. OK. So I got up. I could hardly breathe, you know. So anyway, when I flew back to Taiwan, I was on a doctor's, a doctor's medicine for back pain. And he said, don't drink anything. And I didn't. I didn't drink anything with the medicine. But I was a little bit, you know, looped up with the medicine. And going onto the airplane, I was carrying my bag. And I had my passport in my hand. The stupid thing to do. I wasn't thinking very carefully. And to get that bag into the over. Uh, the space that I couldn't do that. I couldn't lift my arms. So I had to ask for help. And so I got help. While I was getting help, I took that passport and put it in the, the kangaroo pouch in the seat where you sit in the airplane, and I forgot all about it. So I sat down, the bag was secure, my back was hurting me. I kind of said, thank God I'm okay now. And this is in the United States. And we're going to fly from San Francisco to Narita, change in Narita, and then come to Taipei. Mm -hmm. 
got off the plane at, uh, in Japan. I didn't know where my passport was. Well, I did, wasn't even thinking of my passport. I just thought, okay, remember, the bag is up there. So I got help. I got someone to help me bring my bag down. And my back is still hurting. And I picked up my, my jacket and I got off the plane. And I, I had a winter coat on because it was Chinese New Year time. And as we arrived at the center where you change planes at Narita, this is a 15 minute or 10 minute bus ride across the tarmac. Airplanes are all over the place. I said, my gosh, where's my passport? It's not in this pocket, it's not in that pocket, it's not here. And then I had a flashback, it's in the kangaroo pouch, pouch in the airline in the seat. Oh my gosh. And I only had around 60 minutes for the plane to, it was a real fast turnaround to get to Taipei. Maybe it was 90 minutes, but the story is more exciting if I make it 60. Okay, so I ran up to the first uniformed person I could see, and she was a young woman, you know, the usual young people who are working at the airport lines. So I, I said to her, um, I did this, can you help me? Yes. So she got on a walkie-talkie and she called the plane and they began, they were already taking garbage out. Oh God, that scared the heck out of me. And then, <laughs> so she said, you come with me. I said, okay. So she got on with another guard and we got in the bus. The bus was empty of people. They drove the bus through the airplane, Tom turned back, they're holding off airplanes, hold it, got Boston food coming through here. They bring me through. I get off, I get out of the bus. By now, we've lost at least 40 minutes. And now I get, have to get this plane to Taipei. Right, right. I, I run up the flight, going into that runway to run up into the airplane. It's lined with big bags of garbage. And I thought, my passport is in one of those bags. I'm in big trouble. But it was OK. I ran down. I remembered the, 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 the seat. I put my hand in the kangaroo pouch. There was my passport. Wow. And so it, and my, it was there. And so I was OK. Wow. So I grabbed it, and I ran out. and. She gave me a hug. I understand this is, and actually I felt a little, you know, uh, Japanese. I don't know anybody there. And she gives me this big hug, and she's a fairly attractive young lady, and all that. It's kind of exciting. And then we go again. They hold off the place and drive me through. They got me to the, and then I'm the last person to get on the airplane. And I get on the plane. I'm dripping with sweat. I mean, I sweat under normal conditions. This is how abnormal conditions. And I'm in pain now, my back is really kicking up. Right. And as soon as I get on the airplane, I hear someone call my name, Father Bauer. And I look, and it was one of my students from Fuda. She was a flight attendant uh, for, I guess, China Airlines. Right, right, right. And she said, are you all right? You, are you sick? And I said, oh, God love you. I'm not feeling <laughs> too well. I said, it's a long story. And you know, I could hardly, I could hardly stand straight, you know? Right. And I had my bag, and all this, <laughs> so she, kind of babied me down to my, my, I was the last person getting on the plane. Once they had me, then they could, could take off for Taipei. Is that a good enough story? That happened. Honest to God, every bit of this is true. I think that's one of the best stories we've had on this show. Okay, well, it's a true story. <laughs> wonderful story. Wonderful travel. Well, very exciting. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have other questions? Um, yes. Um, yes. Uh, from Nisi. Hi, Missy. Hi, Missy. She asks, what is the main reason that makes you stay, long stay in Taiwan instead of other countries? Well, that's really easy. It's all of you. <laughs> it's my students. I, I, I have felt so lucky, so blessed to be a teacher and a Shenfu at Fuda. Now, I, I, I cannot, I'm sorry, but I cannot separate being a Lao Shi from being a Shenfu because that's who I am. I am. I am both of these things. Okay, so uh, I happen to believe that I'm the luckiest person on campus because uh, my students take such good care of me and are always open-minded about my, they don't allow the Shenfu part to be an obstacle. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that because in some cultures, for non-Catholics uh, or for persons who are not Christians, and remember Catholics are Christian also, uh, to have a priest as your teacher in a college, some students would not like that. You know, some. They would be, you know, they just that's not a good idea. I don't want a religious, a spiritual leader as my teacher. I just want a PhD, well educated to be my professor. I don't want this religious clothing he's wearing as a Shenfu. But I've never felt that with Fudan. Mm -hmm. And in fact it's been the opposite. A lot of affection, uh, people giving me the chance to be who I am. So that's why I'm really happy here. Yeah. That's the biggest happiness, the greatest happiness for me are my, is my students. I think the work I've been allowed to do, 
I think um, earlier Andrew did me the favor of bringing up my newspaper column. Now I try to write on my own. I'm trying to write some fiction, you know. So um, this is my work now, and uh, that with being a teacher, I enjoy this very much. I really, uh, how many people, I'm now 69 years old. I won't tell you a lie. I became 69 yesterday, okay? How many people 69 years old are this happy with what they do uh, with the last 24 hours of my life, the coming 24 hours, the coming months, years? I'm very happy with what I'm allowed to do so far with my health and my opportunities. And that includes my church stuff on weekends and my, my weekdays. With students. I still teach three courses uh, every semester. This semester I have three, and next year I'm going to have three also, both semesters, as far as I know. So I'm, I'm very lucky. Yes. Thank you so much, students, for the questions. Father, would you like to show us the... Oh, the, this the, one, the, thank you very yes. much. This is... Um, a t-shirt, I don't wear it very often, all the plastic makes it very warm to wear. Uh, this is T-A-R-S-I-E-R, -E a tarsier. Tarsier. Tarsier is a little animal similar to a small squirrel. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't remember what makes them so funny. It could be that they don't sleep very much, I'm not sure. But in the Philippines in Bohol, they have a, a zoo that we visited, and they had tarsier, and they were like, they were kind of fun to watch in their cages. I think they, they sleep, I can't remember, there's something about them that made them funny. I, now you can say I'm embarrassed. Sleeps all, all day, day, party all night, it's fun to be a Tarsier. See, so behold the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I like this very much. I decided to invest in the t-shirt. This is a cup that one of my colleagues on the faculty gave me. Uh -huh. This is a wooden cup. Very uh, nice. How often do we drink out of wood? I don't know. I've never really drunk out of this. But I put pens in there and some coins sometimes, mm -hmm. or you know, notes for me. I roll up the note and put it in there. Don't forget to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, but a wooden cup and says San Miguel beer since 1890 Philippines. So San Miguel, of course, is a very delicious beer mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. A couple of souvenirs for you to look at. Okay, so I'm wearing a souvenir. Yes, sorry. I'm wearing a Filipino shirt. Maybe I can model oh. this. Okay. Very nice. The faculty, one of the faculty members, I think. The chair sent them out to the department store. Mm -hmm. They measured me and got this shirt for me. And I actually have three of these. That's too nice. Well, how can I wear these nice shirts? And actually, they're kind of warm. The, the high collar, Yes. if you're not in air conditioning, uh, unless it's winter time, right. this shirt is not very comfortable, actually. It's too warm for me. Uh, yeah, I, but uh, anyway. Wonderful. Nice shirt, isn't it? Yes, very nice. With this roll pino. Perfect, uh, perfect shirt to wear for today. I think for today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. So students, we're almost at the end of today's live broadcast, but uh, we here, because as Father Bauer himself has told, it, told you, he turned 69 a few hours ago. Okay. He's 69 <laughs> years old. So we will now, as the crew and myself, we will sing happy birthday to Father Bauer. Uh, and students, please, Wish Father Bauer a uh, happy birthday in the comments. Yeah, uh, that's just a personal request from me. Okay. <laughs> so his happy birthday singing is not just for me, by the way. Thank you so much. It's for my mom. Think of what she went through 69 years ago. I have tremendous respect for girls and women. I think we men, we don't talk about this enough out loud. We, what, what, a, what a, a woman goes through to have a baby. Well, let's be honest here. This is a very, very large act of love, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, you know, nine months and then the suffering of the childbirth. I mean, we don't talk about it, but I think sometimes we should say thank you very much. Yes. Thanks, Mom. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll now say happy birthday to Father Bauer. Okay, so, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Father Bauer. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, so thank you very much, everyone. And thank you all very much for today's live broadcast. We'll see you all. Come back. Thank you all very much for watching, everyone. We'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.